Hello, welcome to this second video in this series on integrating powers of trig functions. We went over example last time, we went over the concept of how to deal with the powers of um, sines and cosines. And um, now we wanna work on a second example. Um, we said that it all depends on whether there's an odd power present or not. And so when there's an odd power present, there's a certain way you handle the problem. It eventually turns into a U sub. When there's not an odd power present, you handle it totally different. And so in this question here, this example, we have an, a definite integral and sine is raised to the fifth power. It's not even the sine of x, it's the sine of 6x. So there's some wrinkles in there that could really foul things up. And there's a 90 out front. You'll see why that 90 is there. It's there with the purpose of hopefully getting rid of fractions. Okay, so we recognize the presence of an odd power. So we accordingly follow the formula that says we should factor out one of those powers and leave the other powers there to be converted to the other trig function. Sine to the fifth of 6x is going to be broken up, factored to be sine to the fourth of 6x times the sine of 6x. And I changed the color on that so you can see that it's going to be part of du. I want you to know that you're factoring, you're doing this first step so you can get part of du. I say part of du because it's not exactly all of du like we had in example one. Okay. Now the other two powers, uh, uh, the other four powers, sorry, we convert them using sine squared equals to one minus cosine squared. You see, it's sine to the fourth who is sine squared squared. So we replace the sine squared with one minus cosine squared, and we raise that whole quantity to the two. That's how we get sine fourth. And remember now, they're all six X's and not just X's inside. All right, so this is our new integrand, and we're almost done. We're ready to set up our U sub. We have the original integral, and then we ripped out the inside, and we're putting in this blue and red uh, form here where we have the sine to the fourth in blue and then sine to the one in red. It's still sine to the fifth. We haven't changed anything. The integral is still zero to pi over 12. It's still a 90 outside. It's still an integration in X, but we're set up perfectly now to do a U sub. Now, let not, the reason why the red is there, that's part of DU. What you're going to let u equal is the other trig function because you know the deri they're derivatives of each other. You're going to let u equal cosine x. Not the whole thing. Not 1 minus cosine squared. No, just cosine of 6x. The derivative of cosine of 6x is negative 6 sine of 6x with a dx on the end. You see, at the end of your integral, you have sine of 6x dx. So you can now figure out how to sub for that by dividing this equation that we're looking at now by negative six. And you'll see that the sine of six X DX can be replaced with negative one six DU. So we know how to replace the end part. And in blue, we know how to replace that. That's gonna be one minus U squared quantity squared. Now we're gonna have an issue. You see, we have a definite integral and if I'm now going to write these, this new integral in this new variable, I have a choice to make. I either treat it as an indefinite and then trade back in, or I change my limits of integration. I recommend going down the limit of integration change, you know, switch, and seeing if it is something that's going to make things simpler for you. So I like to make a chart and organize it when I do it. So we have an upper limit of pi over 12. The substitution is I'm going to plug that in, multiply it by six, uh, it goes into the cosine function and u comes out. So if you double, and if you multiply by six, pi over 12, what you get is pi over two. What is the cosine of pi over two? It's a zero, okay? What happens when you plug a zero in? Six times zero is zero. What is the cosine of zero? It's a one. So we actually have an issue here. The upper limit is now zero and the lower limit is now one. Why is that an issue? It's backwards. I have it highlighted in magenta here. You can't have the upper limit smaller than the lower limit. 
you could remedy that though. It's nothing. Okay. Go back to Calc 1. Remember the technique. If that's the case, you just switch them to be the proper order and you negate it. Um, I think if you divide 90 by 6, you get 15. And that negative is out there because of the uh, the U sub. So we bring another negative out there to switch the bounds to be the correct order. It's really just a 15 outside. The bounds are in the right order. And at the same time, we can expand out the integrand. Take 1 minus U squared and square it. And you'll have 1 and then minus 2 of those U squares plus a U to the 4th. New bounds, 0 and 1. We love the bounds, 0 and 1. That's great. Plug a 1 in, plug a 0, especially to a polynomial. To have a 0 as a bound when you're integrating a polynomial is just wonderful. Now, let's see why this 15 is here. The 90 was there. It cuts us down by, we divide by 6. Now we have a 15. We'll see the 15 is perfectly placed as well. Find the antiderivative here. Simple power rule in reverse. U minus 2U cubed over 3 plus U fifth over 5. And we're going from 0 to 1 using a fundamental theorem of calculus. But before we go plug in, let's employ the 15. Let's distribute it. See how there's a 3 and a 5 as the denominator? By you multiplying by 15, all the denominators are gone. And so we have then uh, 15u. When you multiply 15 by 2 thirds, the 3 turns the 15 to a 5, and you double that 5. It's a negative 10u cubed and then a positive 3u to the fifth. Put a 1 in, put a 0 in, you're done. You don't have to go back to those original bounds. You did a limit switch. So you put the 1 in, that's great. That's just going to change all the u's to be 1's. 15 minus 10 plus 3, you put a 0 in, it's going to give you a 0. Final answer, the area under that curve from 0 to pi over 12 is a nice integer answer like 8. All right, so we've seen two examples. Both of them have an odd power present. Factor out one of the powers, trade the remaining even powers in using Pythagorean trig identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Do a U sub and it becomes a polynomial integral. So when there's an odd power present, this is how you behave to solve the problem. When there's not an odd power present, then we're on to the next video for that. All right, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I thought I said it at the beginning, but I didn't. And uh, yeah, I'm here to help. I'll see you in the next video.